All right. So another thing I'm going to do that's a little bit special here is I'm going to start AFNI with AFNI dash triple X N pain. And I'm going to set it to 1024 because I want to look at it at some atlases that have a lot of different regions. And so to be able to do that, uh, I'll do that uh, to set to allow the color scale to support that. Okay, so I'm starting AFNI in the ABIN directory. Okay, so I will choose one of the uh, data sets in my AFNI distribution directory, and uh, we can go through these, uh, go through the list here. So you'll see, I want to use the uh, MNI 152T1-2009C. Um, and looking at this, I can see that, uh, that uh, th well, this is the one that comes from MNI. We have, actually have a couple more of these. Uh, if I scroll down some more, you'll see I have, I have one with almost the same name, 2009template.e.gz. This is the same thing, except this has been unified, and then this is the this is one that has uh, five sub bricks uh, with skull on and skull off and and uh, mask. So uh, this is the one that we will generally use with at SS Warper. So so let's just use this for now. And for my overlay, uh, let's look at at some of the atlases that come with AFNI. So. Um, Let's let's take a quick look at uh, uh, this one. This is a macro label one. And so if I look at this, this is an MNI space, and my underlay my underlay is is an MNI template. But if you look closely, you'll see some of these edges they they don't quite match. That's because there are a lot of different MNI templates. This this uh, macro label atlas was actually made for the N27 data set, not for the 2009 C template. Um, so you, know, you have to be careful that uh, that uh, you you may not get an exact match if you're using uh, an atlas that wasn't made for for a particular template. Uh, uh, the MNI A is a different different uh, space completely than uh, the. Uh, you'll see it's even farther off. Uh, uh, that's because this was made for the MNI NAT space, the macro label 1.8 uh, 1 version from Mike Gonzalez. So it's even farther off. Uh, so just be careful that you're using an atlas that's made to go with a template. But I'm, I'm more interested today in showing you the uh, the uh, Glasser atlas. So let's scroll down. And here is the Glasser atlas from the HCP group. Uh, this is a WashU group uh, that did this, and we've put it into a volumetric space here. Okay, so we'll just use this. And so this is our, our starting atlas. You can see right away that atlases show this in the overlay panel. They'll show a label there. As I click around, there will be other, the label will be updated. Um, I can also right click on the uh, grayscale bar and uh, oops, turn uh, labels on there. Maybe I want to make that font a little bit bigger. And as I click, both this area and that are updated as I go. Um, right clicking on the, uh, on the image viewer in any of the image viewers will give you some other choices. So if I right click, you can see some things like uh, jump to MNI. Uh, if I want to jump to a particular MNI coordinate, a coordinate in MNI space, I can do that through this. And this uh, uh, asks for me to enter the MNI coordinate in LPI order. Now the order here is RAI order. This is just uh, uh, RAI and LPI are connected just by the, the X and Y are negated. So if I wanted to go to exactly this location, I would have to just take the, the negative of that. So if I do 62, negative 22, and then 22, uh, then uh, set that. 
the cursor doesn't move because I'm, I'm still at that same coordinate. Uh, but usually we do this in, in, uh, from a data set that could be in Telerac space, it could be in MNI and at space, and uh, AFNI will figure out how to get to that coordinate, uh, to an MNI space coordinate uh, in LPI order. If you if you uh, if AFNI knows what space the data set is in, so uh, a small comment here is that if you have nifty data sets from from other sources, from SPM or FSL or from wherever, the uh, space may not be noted properly. So in Nifty, you have uh, uh, S-form codes and Q-form codes that say where the data set, what space the data set is in. Um, so if it's in zero or one, these are in kind of, uh, well, they're in one scanner coordinates with zero, it's unknown. If it's in two, has been registered to something, so that is a kind of an ambiguous uh, code. And three, if uh, if it's three, it's uh, Telerac space, and if it's four, it's MNI space, and we have a new one. Uh, five, it's some other space. So if it's marked correctly, then AFNI could potentially know how to get to MNI space. So it knows how to get to MNI space from MNI and that, and from and if it is already in MNI space, uh, as these are, or if it's in Telerac space or you know, a variant like TTN27 space. Small note there uh, for how to get to an MNI coordinate given uh, a, a data set. Just, you know, just be careful that your data set is marked appropriately as, as being in a certain space, and you can check that with that 3D info command that I talked about before. All right, so um, let's do some, some more fun things inside uh, the AFNI GUI. If I, I right-click again, uh, I can do things like go to Atlas location. Now this brings up uh, the centers of the Atlas region that uh, we set to, uh, for our AFNI Atlas colors uh, environment variable. So this is the, the default one that I've, I've I've set using that command I showed you earlier. If you didn't do that, then you would just see TT Atlas here. Uh, I'm trying to phase away from the uh, the Telerac team and the TT Atlas, so uh, to something that that works better. So if I take any of these these regions and I say uh, uh, I want to go to this, it will move me over to to that region. Uh, so uh, you can explore and see what these different regions are. Uh, and it's very easy to use like that. And so these centers were just calcul calculated as a internal centers for these, uh, for these various regions. All right. So, uh, some other fun things to do in the AFNI GUI. Uh, we can look at Atlas colors. Okay. So, here it's populating uh, the uh, this list of regions, and we can go to any any particular one. And uh, oops, so so if I'm interested in the seventh visual area, maybe I want to show that in red and. Uh, See, so I can go over here, and uh, I've got to find my seventh visual area here too. It's right here. Okay, so um, okay, this is shown in red now, but I have the overlay set on anyway so let me turn off the overlay and you can see that this is I can see just that region by itself all right so um, and we can control whether it sees those Telerec uh, whether it sees the overlay with this button which shows see TT Atlas regions but this is for any Atlas colors region okay 
Um, I'm going to to uh, clear this and uh, click done on that. And uh, I will turn the overlay back on so we can see that a little bit more easily. And I will turn on uh, one of the, the more powerful functions in AFNI. It's called where am I? So I've right clicked on the image viewer and I select where am I? And this brings up a, uh, uh, a GUI here, uh, which shows uh, the various uh, uh, spaces. It shows our coordinates uh, that we start off with. So we're starting off here in RAI order at 2685.27. And here it shows it in LPI order in MNI space where we where we are. Uh, uh, so as at LPI order is at minus 26, minus 85, 27. So LPI order means that it goes from left to right, negative to positive, uh, posterior to to anterior, and inferior, inferior to superior. Uh, this is the exact opposite of uh, how other other uh, groups call uh, that particular order. Other groups may call this RAS order. It's just a convention. This is the way we do it from lowest to highest. Others may use the positive uh, coordinate value as the uh, initial. All right, so more in this, this uh, the where am I interface. So it shows us the conversion of the coordinate among different spaces. Uh, there's a link to Neurosynth that we can click on and will open up the Neurosynth uh, web, website for that particular coordinate. Uh, it will show us uh, all the atlases that are, are available because I loaded it inside the uh, the ABIN directory. It's showing us in a, in a couple different ways. It shows us a session atlas, shows us the uh, atlases available uh, through a session, and also the regular typical atlases that it would find. Um, the here we can see atlases report regions in different ways. Uh, so the macro label atlas here shows us we're in the left middle occipital gyrus. Um, uh, the other version of the macro label is the same thing uh, through a simple transformation. But uh, the Glasser atlas says that we're in the seventh visual area. Uh, but it also says, so atlases don't agree where you are because they're all made in different ways and, 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 uh, Transformations among all of these are approximate in different spaces. Um, uh, so there's there's not a there they don't agree on the names of the regions, and uh, you know so we can't be sure that we're in any particular region depending on who defined it and how it was defined. Uh, so we give you some choices. Not only do we give you lots of choices for atlases, we also give you choices that regions nearby may be actually where this voxel is for a particular subject. So uh, here we see that within three millimeters we're at the this air, this region called PGP. Uh, four millimeters away the intraparietal zero region. Uh, five millimeters uh, the V3A. And we go out to about 7.5 millimeters. This radius around every voxel is uh, is available um, is 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 able to be set in the, your dot afni rc file uh, so lots of different atlases uh, that you have the choice uh, you can choose which one to use um, most there are different formats for these these uh, atlases some of them are like these these you can have uh, atlases that are probabilistic uh, so uh, this is a gray matter, gray white matter probability. So there's a 70% probability based on the way this cytoarchitectonic atlas was made that, uh, that you're in gray matter and a 24% chance that you're in white matter. The percentages don't always add up to 100%. That depends on how they, they made the, uh, the uh, probabilistic atlas. And uh, when we have these MPM atlases, these are the maximum probability map atlases. So for uh, we 
they're calculated using probabilistic maps. So how do you you, you find the overlap of every region uh, at every single voxel, and then you find the region that has the maximum probability uh, uh, for that particular uh, atlas. This depends on a lot of different factors on their subjects and, the, and on how the alignment was done. Uh, so uh, we have all these different choices. Uh, at the bottom here, I've, I've demoted our, our traditional Telerac demon to the bottom of the list. This is the TT demon. And uh, so uh, that is, uh, shows a different set of regions. All right. Um, in AFNI, you can also uh, use regions in the draw data set plugin. So if I right click on, on uh, on a, an image, uh, and then I select draw R ROI plugin. Uh, I can use it there, or I can go to define data mode and select draw data set. There's a separate tutorial on using uh, using the draw data set plugin. Just briefly, here is where you would choose an atlas. Here you can choose among different atlases, and so you can find which atlas you would like to use, and then uh, uh, bring in the atlas regions. This has many of them, so if I click, you can see there's a big list. Uh, or I can right-click next to this and then scroll through the list and then select a region here to, to be loaded, and I can then edit that in in the uh, Draw Dataset plugin. And so I can, I can use a modified version of an ROI there. So... Uh, a couple different ways to use atlases. Uh, we'll continue on with more things about atlases in the next video.